This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everyone. Today I want to continue talking about future technologies that will improve our daily lives. And this is a big one because it involves concrete. A concrete is used twice as much as all other building materials combined. Uh, it's estimated that there's about three tons of concrete used for every person on the face of the earth per year. And one of the big problems is that as concrete ages, it tends to have cracks in it, uh, which over the years leads to it being replaced. You need to replace it or repair it. And they found an ingenious way of fixing this. And what they do is they put bacterial spores in the concrete along with yeast extract. Okay, and the yeast extract is to feed the, these spores, these bacterial spores. Now, when the bacterial spores are exposed to air and water, what will happen is that they will feed on the yeast extract and they produce limestone and the limestone repairs the cracks to where you you can't even see that the, there was a crack developing it and and it at the very least it will make the the crack less severe and usually completely repair it so this is an ingenious uh, solution that will have a major positive impact they call this amazing technology self-healing concrete so it's like when the concrete starts to crack and it gets exposed to air and water you know the these bacterial spores kick into action and they heal the concrete uh, ingenious and it is relatively quick once the bacterial spores are exposed to air and water it usually takes about 14 days uh, for, for it to heal the concrete. Uh, so it's just amazing. Another amazing technology is the acoustic fire extinguisher. And that's using sound waves to put fires out. Uh, the sound waves drive the oxygen away from the fire that robs it of its fuel that it needs to burn and the fire eventually burns out. Now it's mainly used as a localized fire extinguisher right now, but they're thinking that if with the right frequencies and different techniques they're trying to develop, that they'll be able to, to tackle larger fires in the future. And the next one is kind of special interest to me because I used to be a farmer in a previous life. <laughs> and it's floating farms and the idea is so absurd and wonderful at the same time uh, is why I, I it interests me so much but it's making use of of the surface of the earth uh, that probably wouldn't be used for anything else and that's usually where it happens um, only 30 percent of the earth is used for agriculture of the earth's surface is used for agriculture and a third of that is used uh, for uh, raising crops and the other two-thirds of that is used for grazing so there's uh, really a, a small part of the earth that's being farmed of course uh, uh, a lot of it is unfarmable with mountain ranges and deserts and so so forth and and the uh, arctic and, and, and Antarctic <laughs> ice caps. So uh, I, I don't know. I think they're probably counting those in there too. So, but this makes, uh, it's related to the idea of vertical farms. But if you have vertical farms, you are using land. And so you're, you're, you're taking up space that, that probably uh, could be used for other purposes. And this is uh, to use it in, in waterways, 
uh, that it's not interfering with anything else and, and, and also can be used uh, for other purposes. Uh, for example, I've noticed uh, they have one of these floating farms in the Netherlands, in Ro Ro Rotterdam, 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 I guess. And basically, it's a dairy farm and they're milking cows. And, and I think it's solar power, the milking machines. I, I see what looks like solar panels to me, uh, but I, I can see how that all fits together. Uh, that, uh, and actually even vertical farming on land is much more efficient in many ways. You can produce so much more and you use less water because you can give the exact amount of water and you can control sunlight with electric sunlight, uh, you know. So it's much more controllable and it can be much more productive in many ways. And especially on, on your high dollar uh, uh, niche uh, crops, let's say, it can be profitable too. But I think it's an interesting idea. The idea is to use a space that probably wouldn't be used for anything else, or at least isn't interfering with anything else. And you can get the energy from the solar panels. Uh, and also you can, you can give the exact amount of water and sunlight uh, that, that your crops need. So it's very efficient. And it also it's temporary and it's movable, uh, which that can be a big advantage too. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of a, a fringe idea uh, right now. I think it might become uh, more uh, in vogue, uh, especially uh, uh, people that are located near the coast, I would think, uh, that you, you would bring uh, produce uh, nearer to the coast. Uh, so it would save transportation costs also. So it's, it's something that could work. Uh, I, I think as, as our production is keeping up with the population now, uh, hopefully that remains the case. But if that doesn't remain the case, this could become a more of a viable thing in the future to increase production uh, without taking up other resources. Thank you for watching uh, this video on future technologies. I'm going to return to talking about stocks as that's what <laughs> our bread and butter is and what we're really interested in. And the technology, it's good to keep informed with it. And I do these from time to time, but I'm mainly committed to the stocks. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you found value in, in the video that, that you found something that was kind of of interest to you or you found out something you didn't know that might be useful in the future. Uh, and I thank you so much and I will see you in the future.